All right, it's been one night since I did the glue. I went ahead and skipped a step on video here. I just screwed this heat block into uh, this big heat sink here. There's nothing fancy going on in the middle there, really. It just bottoms out. So uh, I did bend these guys up. These are pretty rigid, which is nice because they give you a little bit of extra uh, support here. So I went ahead and zip-tied those together, at least for the moment. Uh, I'm going to do some stuff to dress this up a bit later, so don't worry about that. Um, this is the actual hot end mount, which I think I've only showed in CAD so far. I could be wrong, but uh, basically there's a groove here that allows the hot end to slide. It's actually pretty stiff in there. Um, it rubs on both sides because I got my tolerance off just a little bit, but it still fits and it holds it even more snug than I expected, so it's not always a bad thing. So what I have here uh, is a block I machined. Um, it's 30 by 30 millimeters with the M5 holes here. So. What I did just to kind of future proof this machine, if I do want to go for an extra head, uh, print head that is, I can slide this one all the way to the back, slide another one to the front, switch it from using the center holes, the Bowden adapter, and use both the edge holes. So just kind of future proofed it just a little bit. And uh, for now I'm going to keep it in the middle, and that's because that'll give me the optimal uh, uh, throw on my bed here so that I keep my build area as large as possible. So. Uh, I'm looking at about a little under 10 inches, I think, for the build area with a single head. So that would drop to like 9.5 or something if I move them over. So Anyway, this is just a brass fitting. It's a, a push lock, 4mm outer diameter. Uh, I lost my PTFE tube, so I've got some more in the mail. But um, this guy just screws right in here. And then I'm going to bolt this guy down. So the one missing piece here, this actually was designed to stand off a little bit and actually hit the J-head, which would stick out of this just a little bit. But when I went to redesign this, I kind of liked it better that it didn't stick out. So this is just a little bit below flush. All I can do is take this little uh, spring washer here and install it. It's got kind of an angle to it. So I'll install that there install this guy right on top. But first I have to get this hole lined up just right before I clamp it down. So that'll give me a nice spring pressure down onto this guy. And I don't think I'll need it really, but um, it, it'll just keep it tight, kind of act like a lock washer sort of, but still not destroy my uh, nice finish up here if I want to do something else with this later on. So. this extra white cable during all of that if I put the time-lapse into the video uh, 
the uh, there's I think eight or nine conductors in here, so um, I'll have plenty coming down to the print head for extra stuff. So that'll go to the stepper or rather the servo motor, hobby servo motor that's gonna come down and be my bed Z probe. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm gonna get that on there, but I'll definitely do a video on that because it's pretty cool. Uh, pretty well worn out after that. Uh, getting this Tech Flex on was kind of a pain in the butt. I wasn't expecting that, but um, kind of improvised here. These were gonna be where my fan mounted, but since I've got this little guy, um, I should be alright. This kind of loose and cheesy. I'm not real happy with it, but hopefully there's something I can do. Um, and it's somewhat blocked by the back, back here, by this bottom of the tool plate. And so I can pull it from this side, but I'm trying to reserve the space for the, uh, the Dremel mill head eventually. So, I don't know, we'll just see how it goes. I um, got pretty far tonight though. I'm really, I'm not into powering it up tonight. I'm gonna have to wait till I get back uh, from my trip here in a few days. And gotta get the, let's see if I can get this guy over here. Is that in frame? Yeah, so I've gotta get the, uh, the power hot end section over to this board. I've got to work out powering this board a little bit better than it is. Um, and then getting my two uh, thermistors back here as well. So uh, once that's done, I should be able to power the thing up. I think the only step left on the, uh, the E3D hot end is this nozzle down here has to get uh, warmed up all the way to uh, some pretty high temperature. I can't remember what, but then we tighten it down. So that's still left to go. Uh, I may put that on the end of this video, or I may just uh, leave it off and, or do it a whole nother video, I'm not sure. So anyway, thanks for sticking through this one. Uh, I think I'm gonna be pretty happy. Oh, the whole point of this was uh, put this tech flex, tech flexed umbilical here. Uh, the Bowden tube also coming, maybe separated, but maybe clipped on here, I'm not sure. But this will get mounted off of a piece coming off the back here. And then this will, uh, so my, my left hand back here is uh, static, static mounted somehow. And then this will move back and forth, and I can kind of tweak that to get the right value. But keep in mind this has to go up and down as well, so um, I don't think up will be a problem, but that's what this is real important to get this held tight so that this action moving around here, you can see it's it, it does translate a tiny bit down there, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see if that works or if i got to work something else out. Um, luckily it doesn't move in the other axes, just left and right. So, um, well, left and right, up and down. <clears throat> so, we'll see how that goes. Um, I don't know, this, uh, this PTFE cable may or may not work. Uh, I may have to redo some stuff, but uh, time will tell. So, anyway, thanks for joining me on this video, and uh, I will be back to power this guy up here soon enough.